Welcome, welcome. For today's video, I'm gonna check out The Hunger Games. The Hunger Games is a 2012 American dystopian action film directed by Gary Ross, based on the young adult novel of the same name by Susan Collins, who also helped co-write the screenplay with Billy Ray. And it is also the first installment in the Hunger Games film series. And you can probably tell why I'm doing this, as there's a new one coming out soon. So I figured, why the hell not? So without further ado, let's check it out. So the film begins with some text explaining the nation of Panem, as it is divided into 12 districts ruled by a bunch of rich fucks in the capital. And basically there was a revolt that ended pretty badly, and now as punishment, each district is forced to select two tributes, one boy and one girl, between the ages of 12 and 18, to fight to the death in the annual Hunger Games, until there is only one survivor. And then we meet our pro tag Katniss Everdeen, played by Jennifer Lawrence as she is hunting a deer with a bow and arrow and keep that in mind as it's important to the plot and she runs into her friend Gail Hawthorne played by Liam Hemsworth unfortunately their environment is crawling with peacekeepers mainly because it is reaping day and that's when a representative from the capital arrives to each district to pick out the tributes to compete in the Hunger Games it was me but it's not it's your first year of prayer. Your name's only been in there once. They're not gonna pick you. A few moments later. Primrose Everdeen. That one didn't age quite so well. So yeah, Katniss' sister Primrose gets picked, and Katniss is having none of that shit. Prim! Prim! <laughs> Volunteers tribute. Uh, I believe we have a volunteer. No shit, survive. Anyways, it's the boys' turn, and we meet Peta Malark, played by Josh Hutcherson, as both he and Katniss are escorted to the Capitol, with the representative Effie Trinket, played by Elizabeth Banks. And we also meet their drunken mentor, Hamish Abernathy, played by Woody Harrelson, who is District 12's only living winner, and he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, our mentor is supposed to tell us how to get sponsors and give us advice. Um... Embrace the probability of your imminent death. I know in your heart that there's nothing I can do to save you. What an asshole! And in case anybody's wondering why Hamish doesn't give a shit, well, that's because he mentored the previous District 12 tributes for the past 23 years, all of whom died during the games. So yeah, I can't blame him on that one. But Hamish eventually gives some good advice, like the importance of gaining sponsors, as they can provide life-saving gifts. Uh, when you're in the middle of the games, and you're starving, or freezing, a knife, or even some matches can mean the difference between life and death. And those things only come from sponsors. And to get sponsors, you have to make people like you. Wow, I can't find a flaw in his logic. Yeah, can't argue with that. Anyways, they arrive at the Capitol, where the people there look like something the Met Gala and TikTok shat out. And these people are all excited because the Hunger Games is like reality TV and live streams all in one. And apparently, it's their only source of entertainment. Well, fuck that shit. I'm sticking to anime, thank you very much. Anyways, both Katniss and Peta arrive at the training area, and Katniss observes the careers, who are volunteers from the wealthy the districts 1 and 2 who have trained for the games from an early age and one of whom is played by Jack Quaid the fuck? Anyways, after training, both Katniss and Peta realize that they are both fucked, especially Peta as he doesn't have any killing skills. I have no chance of winning. None. All right? It's true. Everybody knows it. You know what my mother said? She said District 12 might finally have a winner. She wasn't talking about me. 
Damn, that's low. And fun fact, Pito Malark's name literally translates to bread cake. I only bring this up because he works at a bakery, and from now on, I'm just going to call him Pita Bread. Anyways, the tributes are picked one by one to show off their skills to gain some sponsors. And it's Katniss' turn, so let's see what she's got. Well, she's fucked, but she tries again and succeeds, but no one gives a shit. Thank you for your consideration. And after that shit, Effie Trinket is pissed off about Katniss's actions, but she's in luck as Katniss's score is revealed. Katniss Everdeen, with a score of 11. <gasps> oh, 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 yes, 11. Congratulations. Wow. The interesting thing about that is... <clears throat> Then the following day, which is the last day before the game start, we get some TV interviews with Caesar Fleckerman, played by Stanley Tucci, and we get some awkwardness. What? I think someone's a little nervous. <laughs> I said that was quite an entrance that you made at the Tributes Parade the other day. Do you want to tell us about it? Well, I was just hoping that I wouldn't burn to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because it's true. Anyways, when Pita Bread gets interviewed, he drops one hell of a bombshell. Is there a special girl back home? There is this one girl that I've had a crush on forever. I'll tell you what, Pita. You go out there and you win this thing. And when you get home, she'll have to go out with you. I don't think winning's going to help me at all. And why not? Because she came here with me. Oh, no, you didn't! <laughs> And after that interview, Katniss is pissed off as she sees it as an attempt to attract sponsors, but Hamish sees it as profit for the duo. Katniss would later learn that Peter Bread's admiration is real. And we finally get to see the main event, so let the games begin. And if anybody's asking if I'm going to do a Thanksgiving movie, well, here it is, as we got a big-ass cornucopia and people killing each other. You know, like regular Thanksgiving. Also, for the sake of time and for me editing shit, here's the games in a nutshell. And he's dead, dead, another dead one, deady, deadified, two more dead, dead from the neck up, dead from the neck down, but that's life. Oh, in between all that, both Peter Brett and Katniss get close, and Katniss gets some romantic feelings towards Peter Brett. Your medicine. You're not going alone. Yeah, you need it, and you can't walk. Katniss, you're not going to risk your life for me. I'm not going to let you. You would do it for me. Trust me, Gail, it could have been worse. Anyways, it's down to three survivors as Seneca, the dude with the wicked beard, played by Wes Bentley, releases some mutts. <laughs> Oh, and fun fact, in the books, the mutts here are described as genetically altered dog-like people with the features of the previous dead tributes. Anyways, Kato has pito bread in a headlock. One more joke. It's the only thing I know how to do. <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo!
and Katniss kills him to end his misery. Boring! Anyways, both Katniss and Peter Bread are the only two survivors. However, Seneca says there could only be one tribute alive, and Peter Bread suggests that Katniss kills him, but Katniss is like, fuck that shit, and decides that both she and Peter Bread eat a bunch of poisonous berries. And Seneca pussies out. Stop! Stop! Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the winners of the 74th Annual Hunger Games. So both Katniss and Peter Bread win the Hunger Games, and President Snow, played by Donald Sutherland, is pissed as fuck and leaves Seneca a gift he can't refuse. Karma's a bitch. And after all that shit, both Katniss and Peter Bread go back to their districts as President Snow plots some evil shit behind the scenes. And that was The Hunger Games. The film was a huge critical and financial success. So much so that the film's soundtrack featuring the song Safe and Sound, which is sung by Taylor Swift, by the way, won an Academy Award and was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Original Song. And due to its success, the film was followed by three sequels, Catching Fire, Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2. And not to mention the prequel that came out recently. Also, the film even had an impact on not just pop culture, but in real life too, as activists from South Asian countries like Thailand and Myanmar adopt the three-finger salute from the films into becoming an actual symbol of resistance and solidarity for democracy. So with all of that out of the way, so what do I think of the movie? And surprisingly enough, I'm not a huge fan of the movie. Don't get me wrong, like the movie's not a bad movie per se, the characters are well defined and interesting, and the actors do a decent performance, with the exception of Josh Hutcherson, who seems like he doesn't want to be there. Also, Jennifer Lawrence does give a great performance as Katniss, even if she gets cocky about this years later. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Yeah. Bitch, please! <laughs> Also, the whole romance between Peta and Katniss doesn't seem genuine. And also, I don't feel the romance between her and Gale, too, as these three are supposed to form a love triangle. So, yeah, the romance is pretty weak here. But I do find the premise interesting as they're forcing children to fight for entertainment. Also, the games and the action scenes are interesting and creative, with the exception of the shaky cam, because it gets annoying as hell. And the emotional moments are well done, so I have to give them props to that. And the production value is really good, too. And I have to give credit to the films, as content creators use the Hunger Games as a example of how they have to be likable in order to get clout and sponsors, but also to stay relevant in the digital world. And believe me, all of that hits home. Like, look at my ass. I can't even get sponsors. Also, the film is slowly becoming relevant as, as the obsession for stuff like this is becoming more popular. For instance, with the rise of Squid Games, it got both Netflix and Mr. Beast making their own versions. Oh, and if Mr. Beast is making an actual Hunger Games, I'll be the first one to sign up. And another thing that is relevant is how self-absorbed the people in the capital are. As in real life, we're starting to see how rich people are becoming self-absorbed. Get your ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Hell, even YouTubes are with this asshole literally profiting how poor the natives are. This is the world's poorest country and there is a lot of bad things said about it. That's why I'm going to spend the next 100 hours here to see with my own eyes if it's true or not. So the main premise, if you could sit through that attention deficit editing, is him going to the poorest country in the world in Africa. Now, the reason I don't like the film that much is because I'm not a huge fan of the young adult novels. Especially around this time as a shit ton were coming out, which includes this one, the Twilight series, the Maze Runner, and the Divergent films. And also, I even read the books during high school and my early years in college. So yeah, I am well informed in The Hunger Games. But I do have to put my bias aside while reviewing this film. And so in a nutshell, it is a decent film and you will find it entertaining. 
So I give it 4 out of 5 Mockingjay pins. And that was the video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos just like this. And also, if you enjoy my work, support the channel at Coffee. Ko and for those who don't know, Coffee is like Patreon, but based. There you can support me, and you can have your names in the credits. And if you do support me, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. As usual, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you next time. Goodbye. Jason, Joshua, don't make me pick between you two on the night before I re-enter the struggle dome again. We'll never stop loving you, even if you string us along forever. 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 Ah. Oh my god, this is terrible. When did they get to killing the children?